Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nevis DevOps, and I'm going to go over an AWS multi-region deployment with Terraform. Uh, my friend Casey had asked me about this, so thank you to Casey for giving me some stuff to play with. Um, so let's take a look at this. So essentially, there's just three steps. If you want to create resources, you just make a file, and you put all your stuff in it, and then you run Terraform apply it, right? Well, to do it in separate regions, it's pretty easy. You just make separate directories for each of your regions. So as you can see here, uh, it's exactly what I did. And then you just set up a backend. So that way you have separate S3 bucket or um, uh, S3 Dynamo or uh, DynamoDB table. And then once you're done, you just make your stuff like you normally do. And to get them consistent, um, I chose to use modules. So let's take a look at what I did. So I'll close this out for you. Um, I already deployed all this, so you don't have to wait for me to do everything. But essentially what I did was I created a directory for US East 1 and US West 2. Um, and then in US East 1, I created a directory for a backend, and I created these four files. So in the backend directory is where I started. So what I did was I just made a directory that creates a bucket and a DynamoDB table in this region. And I just defined my provider, just where I define my region and stuff. And what I did was instead of creating them, I, I used my module backend. So in Git, I have a uh, I have a Terraform modules repo. And one of the modules I made is called backend. And this goes over how the backend works. And all it is is really just creating a bucket. And it's just asking for a bucket name. It's asking for um, a DynamoDB table name. And then you, uh, instead of having to have all this code repeated in both regions, what I did was I just said, hey, Go use the module backend. Here's the URL. Here's my bucket name and my DynamoDB table name, and then build it in this region. And then it just builds my backend. Once the backend is built for US East 1, then I can use the backend by saying, hey, here's my backend configuration. And um, I just pass, uh, I, I just start making stuff. So what I did with this was I created two more modules, one called network and one called document TV. And the network is the same concept. Um, it allows you right here to just define your VPC CIDR range, your environment, if you want to name things, uh, which availability zones you're going to use, and the subnet uh, CIDR blocks that you're going to use. And then I did the same thing in document DB gave it a source to my document db module and then just passed a very simple uh, cluster name with the master username and password retention period backup window and, and whether or not skips final snapshot i will say because this isn't a i made this very quick uh, a, a secure thing to do so you'll want to put these off somewhere else in whatever you use to manage passwords uh, vault of some kind and uh, so do not use this in production without uh, removing this username and password portion. So uh, what does this do? Well, when you run Terraform apply here, what it does is it reads your backend file and it gets your state from the bucket and it acquires a lock in DynamoDB. And then it'll read through your two modules here in the main file. It'll read your output file and it'll read your providers file and basically run all these at the same time as like one fell swoop. So the only thing that I would say is if you're using a remote source, don't forget to run uh, Terraform Git with an update flag and that will get the most recent version of your code. So in here, for example, if I go to US East 1, uh, let's see. What's in here? AWS, US East 1. Yeah, there we go. Now if I ran my update command, it's going to download the latest code from GitHub for document DB module and the network module. And if I were to go to the backend, 
and run the same command, it will download the uh, most recent version of the code for my backend module. So that's pretty much it. Once that's done, you just run your Terraform apply, and what you'll see is, get off my Elastic Beanstalk stuff, um, in my VPC, I'm in US East 1, as you can see here in Northern Virginia. I have VPC, I have an East VPC, and in this VPC, I've got an uh, East route table, and in this route table, I have uh, all of my East public subnets associated with this particular route table. Um, and then if you want a more complicated network, you can create a more complicated uh, network module, but I just made a pretty basic one. And if you have questions about that network module, you can uh, you can go to my GitHub page and go to modules and go to network, and it will tell you exactly what it builds. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, once you get rid of that, you can see here I have a private route table, and the subnets associated are my East private subnets, and then there's an internet gateway that's attached to my East VPC, you can see here. And then I just have my subnets. So there's a default, and then you see I have three private, three public. And then additionally, what it did was it created a document DB database. So if I come here and I look at clusters, I have, well, this one says West Cluster. So that's a mistake. So if I go, um, uh, it's a great opportunity to show you this and close up my modules and we go look at our US East one main, I can see here that the cluster name is West Cluster. And if we look at West main, it's also called West Cluster. So if you want to make these different, all you have to do is define them right here in your main file. There's not much to this. It's just 26 lines of code that um, build out this entire thing because I'm using modules. So now if I look at this cluster and I say, okay, I need to update this. I run a, um, yeah, I don't think I formatted this in a while. Yeah, let's do a format and then I'll just do an apply because I already know this is good. And it's going to have to replace my document database, which probably takes like a minute and a half to build two minutes to destroy something like that. So let me explain why I did it this way. So the reason I did this way is because you can have your DevOps people or your cloud infrastructure, whoever people have access to this repo where all of your resources are defined. Separately, your environment itself is in separate repos. So you have your dev environment or your branch or your test environment or your test branch or whatever in production. So your DevOps peeps don't have access to your actual application code and your application developers do not have access to the infrastructure code. This is really, really convenient. The best way to do this <clears throat> is to have multiple accounts where you have a dev account and you could have these resources point to the dev account. You can have a test account and these same exact resources point to the test account and the same thing for production. So then what you end up with is identical infrastructure like completely identical infrastructure in three completely separate accounts. And from where you run, I'm running this on my, my PC right now, but you should run these Terraform apply commands from a centralized location as well. So like a deployment server with Terraform installed on it or um, HashiCorp Cloud, if you wanna use uh, that interface or you could run it from Jenkins or you know pretty much whatever, you can run it from Ansible, and what that does is if you put your Terraform and your monitoring and your Ansible server and you know whatever else you're doing inside a separate AWS account, then the AWS account access is restricted to who, you know, the DevOps people could go there, but you could set up uh, something like a transit gateway uh, to peer the connections between all of the different accounts uh, with different VPCs and manage that transit gateway inside of what you could call like a services account, right? Uh, where you have all of your DevOps tools and monitoring tools and network configuration and whatnot. And then you'd set up a separate AWS account for 
your finance and management peeps and be able to use AWS organizations to centralize all of your resources to get the largest uh, discount for using AWS services. So now that I explained that, we can see that now I now have an East cluster and here's my document DB database, which is great, right? But the point of this isn't to do database stuff. So let's change regions and see what happens. So if I go to US West 2, we can see that I have a West cluster. And if we go to the VPC for US West 2, we can see that I have a West VPC with a West route table and the West route table is associated with my public subnets and I can go to my West private route table and it's associated with my West private subnets and this is on the 17 second octet and East is on the 16 second octet. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know. But that is a quick down and dirty on how to set up AWS multi-region deployment using the same exact modules with just different uh, passing different vi variables as input. And uh, don't forget, do not put your username and passwords into any of your Terraform files. Make sure you use a secure vault with rotating credentials, blah, blah, blah. And I will put a link to my GitHub repo in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Please, actually, I've never asked anybody to do this, subscribe to this channel because it's kind of getting traction somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see if I can make it to like a thousand people. So yeah, let me know if you got any questions and happy building.